The morning spent at the Conservatory of Flowers was beautiful, but the heat and humidity needed for the tropical plants takes a toll. So before long, we headed back outside where the building itself and the landscaped gardens that surround it are amazing themselves. Car-free days, every Saturday throughout the summer months, are the perfect time to explore this part of Golden Gate Park, the third largest city park in the United States, behind New York Central Park and Balboa Park in San Diego. It's easy to get down on city life with its crush of humanity and the problems known to plague urban areas, but these oases of green spaces give away that taking such a bleak view is a blinded lie telling only half the story. Look, after all, at this happy street scene we stumbled upon. A rousing dance party filled with delightfully diverse ranges of couples that easily define San Francisco, but only in that it reflects the greater world we live in. It's a world filled not just with exuberant youth, but old and young together, races and genders mixed and matched in a vision not only of what the world might be one day, but what it already is when we let it happen. I'm only sorry you can't hear the original Glenn Miller tunes playing here, but you know, copyright. Let's watch. Finally, we made it our way out of the park and across town to the Exploratorium, a museum and so much more, a place for hands-on exploration and discovery across the breadth of science. The Exploratorium is huge, having moved and expanded over the past few years. You'll find exhibits in areas of physics, optics, acoustics, geology, technology, and more. Almost all of it presented with activities that encourage and invite hands-on interaction with the principles involved. Almost all of the activities can be looked at with levels of sophistication and complexity, yet are still simple enough that even the youngest budding scientists can work them. In fact, one of the biggest challenges for adult museum goers is probably being patient, waiting for all these kids to get finished so that we can get a turn trying out these fascinating activities. Just look at these. They don't leave out psychology. Would you be able to utilize this interesting water fountain? Yes, it's completely sanitary, but still, some people can't help but find it off pudding. Delicious. Disgusting! Magnets, pendulums, rotational inertia, wave motion, optical illusions. Sometimes the point isn't immediately obvious, but everything gets the brain working and playing with the wonders that science opens before us. How many hours or, or days could you spend here? And trust me, I'm only showing you a fraction of the exhibits and activities at the Exploratorium. Which do you find most intriguing? Do they make you want to dig in and get involved? Do they make you want to try out similar ideas at home? Do they fill you with more questions than answers? Questions of how and, and why? I believe that's their aim and one they achieve with remarkable success. Admittedly, a visit to the museum isn't cheap for a family. One wishes we had more support for institutions like this, and if you can help, you're encouraged to do so. But even if it's something you can only do once in a while, it's definitely a worthwhile investment and experience. Grab it where you can. And now, some more of the Exploratorium. We're going to roll over this line, which will take 510 more spins. We've already done a couple hundred. But yeah, our goal is to get that nine to roll over. It's only another 460 to go now.
Well, that was the most exciting part of it. Keep spinning. Keep spinning. Exploratorium is an amazingly wonderful place, but it can also be very depressing. As I learned today that my hearing at my age now cuts out about 12,500 hertz, um, whereas my daughter can still hear almost to 20,000 hertz. I am an old man, or maybe too many rock concerts as a youth, or both. But Exploratorium, easily our favorite place in San Francisco. Don't miss it if you're ever here. Hello? Talk to you again soon. Don't forget to be awesome.